all right so what's going on everybody it's me troy and of course i'm here again with the video and i'm going to share with you guys the later half of my dedication i use that word to reading the top 100 mystery novels of all time based off the crown crown crime companion those alliterations um list um so yeah this is just kind of like the later the tbr you know i enjoy sharing these books because a lot of you guys will sometimes send me comments and saying you know oh i love this but you know what i'm saying like that sort of thing so it, get, it juices me up but um i'm going to pick up where i left off numerically and that is on number 32 which is the woman in white now the reason i'm kind of stuttering here is because i kind of want to go ahead and read this now but i'm deciding to hold this book back until the end of august because my it's just too big and my work schedule is not like it used to be but here's my copy of the woman in white by wilkie collins i don't even really think i have to say too much you guys have continuously reminded me of how much you love this book and you know having read the moonstone two summers ago i can only imagine the amount of sheer joy that i will get out of siphoning every little detail that i can out of wilkie collins's gothic tale in the woman in white because the moonstone was absolutely a freaking amazing as i expressed time and time again so i'm gonna try to keep this short by just saying that the woman in white envisioned this woman in white who has escaped this insane insane asylum i'm doing too much right who run comes into contact with this gentleman who falls in love with her and then that's where all the melodrama which is all within these fat pages where all the melodrama and dark tales and dark deeds and twists and turns and i think that one of the things that's going to be so amazing or is very notable about this book is the fact that it pulls um a lot of by the end a lot of strength out of this main this woman in white from whatever ordeal that she has uh, i guess you could assume she escaped from so i'm gonna try to keep speak i'm gonna try to stop speaking from it but I could just cannot wait to read this book but because it is so thick and my work schedule is so different than it used to be where i can't just kind of read all day having you know used to working third shift it's gonna take me a minute it's gonna probably take me a week so i'm gonna hold off on that but the woman in white is finally finally pulled off my shelf so skipping that i'm currently on trent's last case by ec bentley which was published in 1913. As you can see, I have a bookmark in here because I started reading this Friday. Today is Sunday, and I'm about 80 pages away from the end. So after I cut this video off, I'm going to go to a coffee shop, which I have been loving going to coffee shops and reading these books this, over this month. And I'm, but I'm, 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 my plan is, excuse me, to finish this today on Sunday because this mug is coming up next week. So. First of all, the blessing in all this, because it's so hard to find a lot of the books presented in this, is that I happened to go to this used bookstore in my area and they had a copy of this. I was amazed. Dude, let me tell you, I was um, I was like, I could not believe I found it. And whoever previously had it made a lot of notes and annotations in it personally, as you can see here, which I really don't read, but it just get, add that extra kind of texture of character to this particular book and it's one that i'm going to hold on to but philip trent the main protagonist is involved he's a journalist but he's trying to solve this crime involving this wealthy wealthy man who has been shot in the eye um in his sort of manor house i guess you could say in the rural rural areas of london but the man is incredibly wealthy um you know he has a wife that's 20 years his junior he has a lot of associates, um, but his reputation is one of not really of the kindest. You know, he doesn't have like the brightest. Um, he doesn't inspire the brightest gaze upon the people that he comes in contact with. So it's rather dark. So that's kind of where the trouble is. But one of the things that I can say that I'm loving about this book so far is just the kind of it's really it's really funny how i can put this but it's kind of like the humbleness of it all like it's very it's a very gentle telling it doesn't rely on like the crassness that you sometimes see with with or that i had noticed with a lot of detection you know golden age de detection fiction you know philip trent is though he is witty in in certain areas there's this sort of comfortability that I get with reading his characters where I don't feel like he's going to kind of like step out of line like some of these people and try to make jokes that just don't fall flat because they're so 
in the misogynistic realm and other things but um it's just kind of like a really gentle read to me and the pacing is amazing i love the fact that you know philip trent as a journalist the author knows how to employ that character's uh, profession into the mystery in terms of relaying information to the reader it's like i can actually keep up because Philip Trent has diagnosed each individual thing that he's come across. But what's extra interesting about this book is that he, Philip Trent gets the murderer wrong. And that's where I am in the last 80 pages trying to figure out, okay, so he has to go back and clean up his mistakes. But um, the Trent's last case, I'm loving it. It really, really immediately pulled me in and I cannot wait to cut this camera off so that I can complete it and see who actually killed the older gentleman so number 34 is double indemnity indemnity by uh james m kane which i've already read i have a copy over there and i, I i'm not gonna go pull that off but you know that that was that's amazing you can read that in the afternoon um and number 35 is gorky park by martin cruz smith published in 1981 and i've got a copy here right here gorky park so this is what i'm going to be reading next it's pretty thick itself um what i can tell you about this book um, there's three ice skaters who had their hands removed as well as their heads and they are buried in ice and then that is where the main protagonist which his name is uh Arcady Rinko, I believe it's saying, where he has to, of course, uncover the crime of what happened to these three ice skaters, beginning with tracking who owned one specific skate from a pair of skates. So, yeah, I'm thinking three decapitated bodies buried underneath ice. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. I'm ready. So, Gorky Park is next on the list and i'm hoping it's good like i'm really am like i don't want any more disappointments because this is one sort of like with trent where i'm kind of just going by this list and completely thrown into in you know whether it works or not is really up to how in connection i am with the author and their particular way of telling the story so number 36 is strong poison so this of course i can rely on as opposed to them strong poison by dorothy l sayers and this is the first book in her harriet vane series well peter whimsy whimsy in connection with harriet vane who of course is a mystery writer and in this particular book as it introduces her she's on um trial for the murder of some individual via poison but of course she didn't do it so peter whimsy is there to uh find out who the true culprit is and relieve um uh, harriet vane of this particular drama that she has to go through being accused of murdering someone so i cannot wait to of course read this you know dorothy l Sayers has been really giving it to me after reading the nine tailors so Strong Poison is so, so high up there on my anticipated reads. But here we go. I just kind of realized I was reading a few like discussion threads and people, at, readers actually don't like Harriet Vane. And I mean, maybe because I was introduced to her via um, Gaudy Knight there. I loved her. I loved Harriet Vane. So 37 is Dance Hall of the Dead by Tony Hillerman. And you can't really see it, but actually it's right here. I read that three, actually four years ago. So I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that at all. And then 38 is The Hot Rock by Donald E. Westlake, which I don't have a copy of. And I really think that that's, that, that's, that's kind of like the end. Like I'm done with that. So ultimately these are the last four books that I'm going to be spending the month of August reading and finishing up so that I can close off my list and be done. And I just kind of realized that, it, that I hadn't read the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. So possibly, possibly. But anyway, as always, I invite you guys to share with me what you thought about these books. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do in September. Honestly, September, I want to get into another high fantasy book like The Will of Time. And that's maybe because this, the TV show season two is coming back. I don't know. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So see y'all later. Thank you so much for tuning in and we're going to make some more videos. I got some ideas.